You are now tuned in to The Network, the YouTube channel that takes complex networking topics and dumbs it down to a more simple language. Today's topic is RF, or radio frequencies. This is a topic in the CCNA exam, exam code 200-301. Let's just get right into it. What are radio frequencies? Radio frequencies are exactly what they are. It's the the sound emitting from a radio or some sort of uh, transmitter. And that gives off electromagnetic waves for you can so that way you can hear them or even see them even. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, principles, basic principles of radio frequencies. I'm now using my snowball mic, so I'll hopefully y'all can hear me better. But y'all may also hear my loud ass refrigerator. Shout out to my man uh, Patrick Kinane for uh, sending me this uh, new microphone. Before we even get further into radio frequencies we need to do a review on what we did in the uh, non-overlapping channels for wi-fi right we talked about the electromagnetic spectrum the electromagnetic spectrum is basically a scale of of how strong electromagnetic waves can be and what devices or things fall into those categories so if you look at this picture right here on the left hand side you got radio waves and as you go along towards the right right here you got microwaves then you got terahertz radio radiation, which includes uh, infrared light. And then you move on to visible light, ultra rays, gamma rays, X rays, etc. Right. So as you go up this scale right here, the radio waves go up and down like this, right? And then as you keep going up the scale, they go a little faster. And these are what you call and as the, how often it goes up and down is called the frequency. How often, like the word frequent, that's where it comes from. Right. How frequent the radio or the electromagnetic waves go up and down. Right. And we said that we don't just call it frequency on how often they go up and down. We call it we measure it in hertz. Right. So if it travels up and down two times in like, say, one second, then that's two hertz. Three times is three hertz, so on and so forth. And you keep going up one thousand hertz is a kilohertz right and we keep going up right until we got to like gigahertz which was around here right and when we get to gigahertz that's when we start talking about radio uh frequencies that includes microwaves um baby monitors and what we came to talk about wi-fi wi-fi is measured at around one to about five one to about six gigahertz right but they are specifically in the 2.4 gigahertz range and the five gigahertz range. And again, the electromagnetic spectrum is just basically radio or or signals that are basically electric signals combined with magnetic signals. And that's what Wi-Fi is. That's what basically Wi-Fi travels with electromagnetic signals. Now let's break down the anatomy of a radio frequency. We said that they go up and down like that, right? But we like, what are they? What, what happens when they go up and down? What, like, what is it like? Like, break it down for us, right? So let's look at this radio frequency right here, right? It goes up, right? And the stronger and higher it goes up, that's called the amplitude, right? That's where it comes from. That's where the word amp comes from. Well, the amp comes from amplifier, but the stronger it, the signal is, the higher the amplitude is. So that's what amplitude is. That is a basic RF uh, fundamental right there. The stronger the signal, you know, the higher the amplitude will be right now. It peaks right here and that's called its crest, right? So the peak is basically the crest. This is the wavelength. How, you know, the, 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 uh, the, how long the, uh, wave is right now. We also said, when we go back to this slide right here, lower the frequency, the longer the wave, right? So radio waves and stuff that is low frequency, Bass and subsonic sounds on this side of the electromagnetic spectrum, the left-hand side of the electromagnetic spectrum, are long, low, on uh, lower frequencies. As you go to the right-hand side of the scale right here, these are higher frequencies, and these waves are actually shorter. But they are, they do become stronger because, as you can see, they become ultraviolet waves, X rays, etc. So now, when the radio frequency bottoms out, that's called its trough. And this is why I hate the English language, right? Like and through and stuff like that, right? GH is actually an F, right? <laughs> and, but this word actually means trough. That's when the signal bottoms out, and that's the lower part of the frequency, right? So, and as it goes up, right, we see right here. That's when we measure it. We measure it like this in time, 
And this part right here, in this specific radio frequency, that would be one second. Since it's cycled one time, this would be one hertz. And again, this part right here, if you remember, what is that? Pause it and think about it. Again, yes, that's the crest, right? So it tops out at the crest. And again, this part right here is the amplitude, how strong the signal is. These are some fundamentals that we need to know. Now, I looked at the CCNA OCG manual or the official CERT guide. I did not see the anatomy of radio frequencies, but these are basics that we need to know when we talk about Wi-Fi radio frequencies. It is on the exam as a, as a topic, you know, it just says RF but the book does not really break this stuff down. Again, they just talk about, you know, other basics, but I think that this stuff is really important when it comes to needing to know about radio frequencies. So what happens to these radio frequencies as it travels through free space, right? There's several things that can happen. There's obstacles and, you know, when things are far away from each other, one of the things that can happen is what's called path loss. That's def defined as in telecommunication, the free space path loss or FSPL is the attenuation. It's also called attenuation. The further it goes, uh, the weaker it is basically without reading all of this. But anyways, is the attenuation of radio energy between the feed points of two antennas that results from the combination of the receiving antennas capture area plus the obstacle free line of sight path through free space usually air so as you can see right here we got our transmitter it's transmitting rf or radio frequencies this way right and by the way radio frequencies travel just like just like the waves in a, in a on a pond or, or an ocean so if you throw a rock in an ocean right and you see the waves go out radio frequencies travel just like that just like wi-fi frequencies so when you're on twitter on instagram and stuff like that and you're transmitting to a cell phone tower or to your router your home router when you're using wi-fi right it travels in a circle just like the waves and when you throw a rock in a pond or in a lake so the tra the the signals would be traveling just like that right in a circle and the closer you are obviously the closer you are to your to your router or your wi-fi um your Wi-Fi access point, then the stronger the signal is. The further away you are, then the weaker the signal is. That's called path loss. It's just natural for it to happen. There's nothing in the way. It's just that you're really far from an access point or, or your Wi-Fi router. And the further the signal is, that's called attenuation. The further you are, the weaker the signal. Just like if somebody's yelling at you and you, know, you can't really hear them, but the closer they are, if they're really far from you, you can't really hear them, but the closer they are, the better you're more likely, the more likely you are to hear them. RF reflection. Reflection occurs when a propagating electromagnetic wave strikes an object that has a very large dimension in comparison to the wavelength of the propagating wave. So as you look at this picture right here, and this is why I usually just grab pictures because it's easier to see them. You know, you can't really physically see you know, radio waves or anything like that. But, you know, that's why, you know, I, I grab these images so that way it makes it easier to understand. So if you got these waves right here, it's bouncing off of this reflecting surface. It could be, it could be like um, a mirror or something like that. I don't know, a uh, like a wall or something like that. The reflecting surface will be, uh, you know, bouncing of the wave will just bounce off as you can see right here, just like this, you know? Don't that don't take that much explanation to do that right there, but to, to, to explain that right there. But you see the radio wave just bouncing off the reflecting surface. That's where reflection is. If the surface is smooth, the reflected signal may remain intact. There, there also may be some loss due to absorption, which we'll talk about in another slide. Multipath propagation. This is something else that can happen to your Wi-Fi signals. In radio communication, multipath is the propagation phenomenon that results in radio signals reaching the receiving antenna by two or more paths. Causes of multipath include atmospheric ducting, ionospheric reflection and refraction, and reflection from water bodies and terrestrial objects such as mountains and, and buildings. So if you look at this picture right here, we got this access point, pure line of sight, no reflections. It, the signal just goes straight to the laptop. Your signal is gonna look like that. But if you're getting some multipath right here, you got some walls, you got some, you know, who knows? You got some buildings, you got some airplanes, and some mountains like that. Lions and tigers and bears, oh my. The radio signals are just gonna be bouncing around like this. You'll eventually get the signal, but it's gonna look like this right here. And that's where, you know, you'll get like drop 
you know, drop packets and stuff like that, or you'll may, you, you, you know, your signal is going to be slow because of multipath, just like this. So when you're doing a Wi-Fi survey, you want to make sure you are, you know, cognizant of objects or things that can cause multipath. RF absorption. Absorption occurs when an RF signal strikes an object and is absorbed into the material in such a manner that does not pass through or reflect off or bend around the object. So just think about noise. You know, you're yelling at somebody. This is a very common, you know, uh, theme here. This, you know, how I used to, you know, in my other videos, I used to compare networking to roads and highways. When we're talking about Wi-Fi, we want to talk about, we're going to compare it to two people that are talking to each other. If you have obviously something between y'all, there could be something that could have, and you're trying to talk to somebody, there could be something that's blocking them. You know, the signal is going to look like this, right? When you have a lot of amplitude, but if you got a wall or something like that or a door, you know, just like when your mom or your, or your, or your dad was yelling at you and you just like kind of throw ass in that damn room. Oh, you done lost your damn mind, didn't you? You know, the signal's going to get degraded and you'll have less amplitude. So that's exactly what happens with RF absorption. The signal is strong until there's an object in a way, whereas whether it's lead or something like that or some kind of wall, you'll have less amplitude and then you'll have a weaker signal. Noise. Noise is any signal interference that is not Wi-Fi traffic, such as cordless phone, microwaves, radar, etc. Remember how when we were talking about the electromagnetic spectrum, right? We said that Wi-Fi falls into the same category as microwaves and radars, but this is specifically 2.4 gigahertz range. The 2.4 gigahertz range falls in the same category as baby monitors, radars, microwaves, cordless phones, etc. So you'll get a lot of noise in the 2.4 gigahertz range. That's exactly why when you have a lot of noise in that range, it's best to select a 5 gigahertz radio. It's just that there are pros and cons to using the 5 gigahertz uh, wireless band or the 2.4 gigahertz wireless band. band. Some of, one, is, one is further, one is, uh, you know, is, doesn't go as far, but one is stronger and the other one is not stronger. I'll probably do a video on pros and cons between the two. But anyways, note that other Wi-Fi networks are not included when measuring noise, but they are included in the signal to interference or signal to noise ratio, which we'll talk about in another slide here. So again, noise is background noise from other objects in the 2.4 gigahertz range. So you won't get that much noise in five gigahertz. I don't even think you'll get, you'll get noise, but um, it's not gonna be like 2.4 gigahertz. Again, you get, you get a lot of background noise from other objects such as cordless phones, radars, etc. RSSI, NIEEE 802.11 system, or 802.11N or A or B or G, those are different Wi-Fi standards, right? RSSI is the relative received signal strength in a wireless environment in arbitrary units. Simply put, it's basically how strong your signal is without reading all of this stuff right here. So if you look at this uh, image right here, you know, it's just like when you look in the, at your cell phone and you're looking at different Wi-Fi's trying to look for the, the, the stronger Wi-Fi. When you have one that has more bars, just like a cell phone bar, right? The higher, the, the, the more bars you are, the more RSS, the higher your RSSI is, right? The stronger your signal is. That's simply put. It's an in indication of a power level being received by the receiving radio after the antenna and possible cable loss. So the further you are, the lower your RSSI is. This is some. This is an important fact we need to know when we're talking about RF principles. Signal to noise ratio. This is exactly what we were talking about in the uh, other slide here. The signal to noise ratio, or SNR, is the power ratio between the signal strength, signal strength right here in the green, and the noise level, which is here in the red, right? So when we have noise, we got these cell phones or these cordless phones, maybe some microwaves or even a baby monitor in the background, it'll be like this, right? But if we're receiving a Wi-Fi signal strength up here, then that's good, right? But the difference between the two is called the signal to noise ratio. As a matter of fact, there's a formula, RSSI minus noise, that equals your SNR. How do you know what's a good SN SSR, or excuse me, a good SNR? In general, you should have a minimum of plus 25 dBm, I believe that's decibels. I don't remember what the M stands for. When I when I figure that out, I'll I, I put that in the comment in the notes below. Signal to no, noise ratio lower values lower than plus twenty five dBm 
result in poor performance and speeds. The RSSI minus noise equals your SNR. You know, you're getting slow network speeds like that. That's another indicator you want to look at, not just your RSSI, but you also want to look at your SNR. Phase of a radio wave corresponds to how far the signal is offset from a reference point, such as a particular time or another signal. So if you look at this right here, we got two radio signals right here, right? We need to pay attention to this line right here. This, these two lines right here, right? This red right here is one radio signal. Here's another radio signal. Well, you might be thinking, why we got two radio signals? Well, it is the same frequency and same cycle, same wavelength, but there are two or more wave signs that are waveforms that are not aligned with each other. So when they are not aligned with each other like that, they are out of phase. So when they are out of phase like that, we'll have a weaker signal, right? So when they are in phase, when they're like together, so like, let's say if the red and the blue lines were together, then it's like basically doubling our RSSI, right? So signals that have a zero degree phase separation, so they're, they're like the red and blue like this, right? You see how they're going like that together? If they're together, in, you know, in their, they have zero degrees phase separation. They actually combine their amplitude. Remember what we said amplitude is, right? How strong the signal is, which results in a received signal or RSSI of much greater signal strength, potentially as much as twice the amplitude. So when you have like a zero degrees phase separation, right? The waveforms that are like this, if they are together, there are zero degrees phase separation, then the, we have a stronger signal. If the two RF signals are 100 degrees or 180 degrees out of phase, the peak of one signal is exact alignment with the trough of the second signal. They cancel each other out and the effect of received signal strength is null. So this is like akin to uh, noise cancellation headphones. So when you have two signals that are the opposite of each other, then it takes away the sound. And that's exactly how noise cancellation headphones work. It takes the signal and puts the ex ex it puts the exact opposite of the wavelength and then it cancels out the noise. So that's why it says here they cancel each other out and the effect of signal strength is null, which is basically zero. So it takes the noise and basically shuts it out. That's exactly how noise cancellation headphones work. <laughs> That is all I got for y'all today. We're not going to do any hands-on today. We just wanted to talk about the basics of RF principles. Again, I didn't see it in the CCNA official cert guide manual, but again, these are fundamentals we want to know. So if you're probably, you know, studying for like the CWNA, which is more of a vendor neutral certification, then these are some RF basics that we need to know. Uh, these are some RF principles that you at least need to know if you're going to do any kind of studying or Wi-Fi or anything like that. But anyways, you know, that is my YouTube page. That is my Twitter handle. If you like this video, if you like my teaching style or anything like that, please share this video. You know, share it on your net, on your social network, share it on Facebook, share it on Twitter, share it on Instagram, share it on TikTok or whatever you want to share it on. Let them know that, you know, I make Wi-Fi and networking and stuff like that fun. If you like this video, please comment like subscribe to the network 